So in our discussion of heat and phase changes, um, you know, when we heat up an object, if it's a solid, eventually it's going to reach a point where it can shift the phase of matter that it's in. Um, the three phases of matter that we talk about and you see the most um, are solids, liquids, and gases. Uh, you probably know the properties of each solids are tightly packed, they you know, have a defined volume and shape. Liquids will fill the shape of their container, uh, will, will take the shape of their container, um, but won't expand, They're, they have a defined volume. Um, and gases will f expand to fill the, the fill whatever container they're in. Um, I've labeled uh, what each tr phase transition is called, um, and uh, I've also color-coded it so that uh, things that are red are exothermic. Exothermic means that they release energy. Um, so when it, something, let's say something freezes, uh, if I freeze something, um, it's going to go from a liquid to a solid, and when it does that, it's lowering the amount of energy that it has, right? It's cooling down, um, and that means that it's going to release energy. Endothermic means that it requires energy in order to happen. So something uh, melting requires that energy is put into that system. Um, if I put an ice cube in a really cold place, nothing's going to happen because there's no energy for it to draw from. There's no heat for it to draw from and melt. So um, these are good to know. These are important definitions to know and understand which one goes with which. Um, and that will also help you when you're doing calculations and you want to know if you're going to put a negative sign in front of your energy or not, whether it requires energy or it's losing energy and releasing it. Exothermic or endothermic. Okay? So, um, there's also, uh, when you're thinking about these types of processes, there's something called a heating curve. Okay? And what we want to think about, we want to think about heating up a substance, let's say at negative 20 degrees, uh, this side will be, let's say this side is temperature, in degrees Celsius, and this will be time in seconds. And I want to heat something from negative 20 degrees, water, to 120 degrees. Yeah, up in center. Uh, and that means it's going to pass through both its freezing point, uh, or its you know, melting point, uh, and its boiling point, which is 100. So if I heat up ice, it is going to increase its temperature. But when it hits the point at which it should be um, changing phase, something interesting happens. Uh, I want you to think about if you put a, uh, an ice cube in a glass of water, what happens if the ice cube is at exactly zero degrees Celsius and the water is at maybe 20? I put the ice cube in, what happens to the water? The water is going to decrease its temperature, it's going to go down. But when it does that, it's giving energy to the ice, right? That's why. It's losing energy. Q equals mc delta t. It's losing energy. It's giving it to the ice. Is the ice going to increase its temperature? Is the physical ice getting warmer? No. The ice is melting. And it turns out, and you can do this experiment if you have some thermometers in, in hot and cold water and ice, uh, it turns out if you measure the temperature of the water of ice, uh, ice water, after it melts, it's still at zero degrees Celsius. The energy that is being pulled out of the water and put into the ice is devoted entirely just to melting the ice. In order to change the state of something, you need to either put in or take out energy. And that energy is not at all used for anything with this temperature. They're two separate things. You can put in energy to increase your uh, temperature, pull it out to decrease the temperature, but if it hits one of these points where it's gonna switch phases, that energy putting in or taking out, taking it out, will instead be used to do a phase transition. But the temperature will not change during that transition. What that means is that right here, we flatline. And this flat line is energy being put in to, in, uh, to change the state, uh, the phase of the ice into liquid water. After it's liquid water, more energy will just heat it up until it hits boiling point and then it's going to, again, energy needs to be used to boil it, and then it will heat up again. So this is a heating curve, and you should be able to read these and draw them for simple uh, scenarios where you're heating stuff up or cooling stuff down. Um, and we know that these lines here, these are all governed by Q equals mc delta t. Putting in energy to a certain amount of mass and a certain heat capacity will change the temperature, right? But what about these? What about this one and this one? How do we figure out how much energy it takes to change the state 
And remember, the temperature is not changing at all. So it turns out uh, we have equations for this. Uh, you have Q equals M times this symbol, and Q equals M times this symbol. So this, all together, this delta in front is kind of misleading. It's not going to be final minus initial. This is read purely as the heat of fusion and the heat of vaporization. Okay? And what you want to know is if I want to melt, uh, if I want to, let me see, let me see the code, but if I want to melt or I want to freeze something, then the amount of energy will be given by the mass that you're trying to melt or freeze times its heat of fusion. And the heat of fusion is a constant, like the heat capacity. It has units of joules per gram, or energy per mass. Um, and this is for melting or freezing. And heat of vaporization is another constant, um, and it's used uh, anytime you want to condense uh, or you want to vaporize something. Okay? So if I want to know, you know, let's say uh, I want to know how much energy does it take to melt a gram of ice. Then you look up the heat of fusion of ice, because again, we want to melt. So melt means heat of fusion. So if we want to melt a gram of ice, we say the amount of energy you need is the mass of the ice, one gram, times its heat of fusion. And it turns out that the heat of fusion of ice, is, or just of water, is 334 joules per gram. So you get, in the end, 334 joules. So it requires 334 joules in order to melt a single gram of ice. Okay? This isn't going to change its temperature at all. This is just for melting it. Okay? Um, other things you can do with this is I can find the total amount of energy needed to raise the temperature from negative 20 to, let's say, to 50. Now, let's say we want to find out how much energy it would take to raise an ice cube, which is below its freezing point, negative 20 degrees Celsius, all the way up to 50 degrees Celsius. So if we want to do that, that means we're going to have to melt it. We're going to have to heat it up to zero, melt it, and then heat up that water up to 50. So whenever you're doing a problem like this, uh, well, we have 20 grams of it, 20 grams. Whenever you do a problem like this, I recommend that you draw the heat, uh, heat curve, heating curve for it. Um, it's going to help you to remember what you need to do, what, uh, whether you use MC delta T or M times heat diffusion or vaporization for each segment. Um, it's just a good tool to, to have with you. So the total heat is going to be the sum of the amount of heat you put in for each individual segment. So just to get it to its uh, melting point, you're going to have to put in Q1. Then to melt it down, you put in Q2, and then to heat it up to 50, Q3. So each one of these, uh, we're going to calculate and add them together. So Q1, you're just increasing the temperature. If you're increasing the temperature, you're changing temperature, that means it is not being melted. It means that it's being warmed. So I'm going to use MC delta T. Uh, where C is going to be the C of ice, because ice heat's capacity is different than water. So we have 20 grams. Uh, heat capacity of ice is 2 joules per gram degree Celsius. And the change in temperature, we're looking only at this one segment, so it goes from negative 20 to 0, so it's a 20 degree Celsius change. Multiply these, you get 800 joules. Now let's do Q2. Q2, it's flat. No change in temperature. This means it's a phase change. You're putting energy in just to change it, change it from a solid to a liquid. So we're going to use M times the heat of fusion. So the mass is still 20 grams. Uh, the heat of fusion of ice is 334 joules per gram degree Celsius. And I should really say it's the, it's the um, heat of fusion of water. Whether it's moving from ice to water or water to ice, same thing. doesn't matter. So you multiply these, you get 6,680 joules. And finally, Q3, we're increasing the temperature again, we're warming it up. So we're going to use MC delta T. This time it'll be C of water, liquid water, right, a little L. Now it's a mess, but that's okay. Liquid water, so we're going to have the mass is 20 grams. Uh, the heat capacity of liquid water is 4.19 uh, joules per gram degree Celsius. And we're going to multiply that by the change in temperature. And again, we're only looking at the change in temperature of the segment from here to here, okay? Which is a change of 50 degrees. 50 degrees Celsius. So we multiply this together. Uh, and this gives us 4,190 joules.
All right. So we add these three things together to get Q total. Uh, our Q total, we're going to have, let's see, we're going to have a 70 here. Uh, and I think it would give us 11,670. All right? Um, yeah. Good. So that's going to be the total amount of heat you need to not just increase the temperature, but also to convert it from a solid to a liquid. Uh, and this is the kind of problem that you just need to be careful with because you need to make sure you're using the right equation for each segment um, such that you get the correct uh, amount of heat or energy that you need to put in. One other type of problem that you're going to need to be able to do is uh, looking at, we've looked before at if we mix two substances together, um, how much each of them will warm up or cool down. And we did that by setting uh, the amount of heat gained by one of the odd substances is going to be equal to the amount of heat lost by the other, right? Because it's just getting moved from one liquid to another, one gas to another, etc. Um, we can still do this with phase changes, because what's happening is if I put an ice cube in a warm glass of water, that water is going to lose energy, and it's going to go into the ice to melt it. So if I want to know, if I put a 1 gram ice cube at 0 degrees Celsius into a 10 gram glass of water, the water is 10 grams, uh, how much will the water cool just to melt the ice? So we know the heat lost by the water, we can measure because it's going to be mc delta t, and it's going to be negative. And the heat gained by the ice, just to melt it, is given by the heat, of, uh, the heat of fusion equation. Okay? Mass of ice, mass of water, heat capacity of water. Okay? So, we want to know the change in temperature. So, our change in temperature of the water, um, we, uh, we know that this is going to be, it's losing heat, and we know that this is going to be negative also. So, uh, let's go ahead and solve this. We can, uh, I'm going to plug in the numbers at the end because all we have to do is divide both sides. So I'm going to have the change in temperature of the water uh, is going to be equal to the mass of the ice times the heat of fusion of water divided by the mass of water times the heat capacity of water. And this whole thing would be negative. So plugging that in, uh, our mass of ice is 1 gram. Our heat of fusion is 334 joules per gram degree Celsius. Uh, our mass of water is 10 grams. And our heat capacity of water is 4. Point, uh, I use, uh, I use 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius. I know I'm not consistent with 4.819. Sorry. Um, it's close. So when you multiply all this out and do your division, uh, you get a change of uh, temperature, so this is negative, of negative 7.99 degrees Celsius. So this is going to, the water will uh, cool by almost 8 degrees Celsius. So it takes a decent amount of energy to, uh, to melt ice, um, and you can cool down water. Uh, 10 grams of water isn't very much, um, but still, 10 times as much water as ice, and it drops uh, 10 degrees. So this is why uh, you put an ice cube in a drink, and it does cool it down pretty effectively, even before the ice melts. Um, and again, we can set these equal because if you have an ice cube, that's my ice cube, and you put it in a glass of water, it's going to, the water's going to lose energy, which I'm going to represent by little arrows coming out, and the energy lost is going to be the same that it gained by the ice cube. And that's just because... Um, that's where it's going. It's losing the heat because it's, uh, the ice is taking it in. Um, and we know that the heat gained by ice to melt it, not warming it up anymore, to melt it is given by M times heat of fusion. And the heat uh, given off if water is cooling down is given by MC delta T. So we're able to set those two things equal uh, and solve for the change in temperature. Um, this could get a little more complicated because I could then ask you, say, okay, now find, after all the ice melts, find the equilibrium temperature of the water. So now you'd have ice, uh, you'd have liquid water at zero degrees Celsius, you'd have one gram, you'd have 20 grams of uh, water at, uh, it started off, I'd have to give you the starting temperature, so let's say 20, so 20 minus 8, 12 degrees Celsius, and then you'd have to use Q equals, Q equals MC delta T, set the two equal, and solve that for the change of temperature. So it'd be a little bit uh, more work, but this is how to just do just the step that is doing the melting and cooling down the water.